Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with barbecued pork skewers. That's right, when you're in the mood for barbecued pork, you basically have two options. All right, you got your barbecued ribs, or you can have a nice slowly smoked pork shoulder that's then usually made in the pulled pork. But what if we're in the mood for something different? Well, in that case, these barbecued pork skewers come highly recommended. And no, we're not just sticking chunks of pork on a stick. This is way more advanced and way, way more delicious, as I hope you find out. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by prepping our pork. And what I'm going to be using today is about a two-pound piece of pork shoulder that I'm first going to cut in half lengthwise, after which I'm going to cut across these pieces into nice thin slices. And if you're not into the much richer, much fattier pork shoulder, you can definitely use this exact same technique for pork loin, which will in fact give you a more tender product. But while it's going to take a little longer to cook, and will definitely be a little bit chewier, by using pork loin, I think I'm going to end up with something that's definitely more flavorful. So ultimately, what cut of pork you use is going to be up to you. I mean, you are after all the Troy McClure of your barbecued pork skewer. So you decide, but no matter what you go with, make sure you slice it nice and thin, like at least an eighth of an inch. And then what we'll do once all that's been successfully sliced is transfer that into a mixing bowl and add the rest of our ingredients which for me is gonna include one large grated garlic clove that we could mince or crush or smash instead. But when you grate it on a microplane like this, you're pretty much pulverizing every cell and you're releasing a ton of intense garlic flavor. And then the same goes for this quarter onion I'm gonna add. All right, I'm gonna grate that also, although on a larger cheese grater. And don't be a hero. This is not worth losing a knuckle or a fingernail over. So when you get down to that little last piece, just stop and chuck that into your compost or just toss it in the bowl. I should have tossed it in the bowl. Why didn't I toss it in the bowl? And then to those volatile vegetables, we will add some classic barbecue dry rub ingredients, such as brown sugar. How come you taste so good? And then we will definitely also need some salt. And the rule of thumb here is about one teaspoon of kosher salt per pound of meat. We will also add some freshly ground black pepper, as well as some paprika, and then a touch of ground cumin. And then last but never least, some cayenne pepper. And that's it. Once everything's in, we'll give this a very thorough mix. And there are two ways you can do this, with your hands and the wrong way. All right, there is just nothing that's going to be as effective mixing this as your hands. All right, since that's going to be like mixing this with 10 little fleshy spatulas. And yes, I promise to never use the term fleshy spatulas again. And while it does take a few extra minutes to slice, by having our meat cut nice and thin like this, this thing's going to have a much deeper and uniform seasoning that if we had just seasoned the outside of a bunch of bigger chunks. And I really think that's the key to why this comes out so good. But anyway, the point is we're gonna mix this very, very thoroughly. And we're not gonna stop until we're at least 95% sure that that is 100% mixed. And then once that's set, what we'll do is wrap it up and pop it in the fridge to marinate for at least four hours or up to overnight, which might be even better. But either way, at that point, we can pull it out and we'll begin to impale it on a metal skewer. And for most of these pieces, I'm going to pierce them twice, which means we're basically folding them in half. But for some of the longer pieces, we can actually pierce them in three spots for like a double fold. And then for some of the smaller pieces, we will just skewer those ones through the center with no fold. So really, the size and length of the meat will dictate what you should do. And don't overthink it. Just let your fingers take over. They'll know what's up. And all we're trying to achieve as we weave this meat on is some relatively consistent girth as we work our way towards the point. And if we end up with any little long straggly pieces like that, we'll just go ahead and wrap them around and tuck them in. And we do want these pieces to meet pretty snug to each other and press pretty well together, but not super, super, super tight. And yes, I'm putting a ton on here. I'm going to get like one pound on each skewer, which is by design I want these nice and thick. And that's it. That is a pretty nice looking pork skewer with just a ton of surface area and a ridiculous amount of nooks and crannies, which of course means more flavor and caramelization and smoky goodness. And if we want, we could just pop these in the fridge until we're ready to grill. But I was ready. So I placed those over some Japanese style charcoal, which is like my new favorite thing. And as you can see, they just barely fit on. And of course, I'm gonna edit this down and not show you all the twists and turns. Since start to finish, this took me about 40 minutes. But you know the drill. We're gonna cook these turning as often as we feel like until they are cooked to our desired doneness which if you're using pork shoulder, I'd go to about 160 internal temp. But if you're doing pork loin, I would not go much past 140, since that is a lot leaner and it can dry out. 
But regardless of what you use, once we think that's close to being done, we're going to finish by glazing these things with the barbecue sauce of our choice. And of course, one of the keys here is not to do this too soon. Since that sauce is only going to take a couple minutes per side to glaze on, and if your meat's not cooked, your sauce might be black by the time it is. All right, we've all been there. So that's something you're definitely going to want to pay attention to. Oh, and speaking of doneness, I sort of lost track of time, and it was a lot later than I thought. And I was afraid I was going to lose the good light to get my final shots. So I actually sauced mine before they were really cooked as far as they should have been. And I did end up pulling these off slightly undercooked. Not like dangerously, but when you use pork shoulder, you really do want to give it enough time for that heat to get through that fat and connective tissue so that that texture firms up and it's not too chewy. But anyway, it was close enough. So I pulled it off and headed inside, and I went ahead and garnished with a few sliced green onions. For the pictures, of course. And after taking a few of those, I went ahead and pulled off a piece and gave it a try. And it really was fantastic. Right, that slicing and marinating with a dry rub technique really produces a ton of flavor, which is why I quickly grabbed a second piece. And I enjoyed that one just as much. But I'm not a complete savage. So I went ahead and pulled some meat off the skewer and drizzled over a little extra barbecue sauce. And in case you're keeping score at home, that is a cold egg noodle salad, which was amazing and I really should film that. But anyway, I grabbed a fork and knife and dug in like a real gentleman. And it really was incredible, which is why it's so upsetting I didn't give it that extra 10 minutes I should have. Right, there's a certain point where that meat firms up and then your teeth are able to cut cleanly through the meat and not just sort of crush it. Which by the way, because it's so much leaner, you are not gonna have a problem with with the pork loin. Right there, all you're worrying about is not overcooking it. But if you're going for all this extra flavor from the fat and connective tissue in a pork shoulder, like I said, you really want to try to get up to about 160. But anyway, I'm going to stop complaining now, because this really was incredibly delicious, and I really do love this technique. So the next time you're craving barbecue pork, and you just don't feel like doing ribs, or pulling a pork shoulder, this is what I think you should make. All right, on one hand, this seems like a very familiar barbecue pork experience, but on the other, it really is quite different, and I think a wonderful change of pace, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.